from Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. I have eaten some mushrooms. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Well, the big automakers, Ford, Chrysler, General Motors, all appeared in front of Congress. And according to the CNN website, CNNMoney.com, says here Ford Motor became the first of the three U.S. automakers to unveil its turnaround plans to Congress. But the plan contained little in the way of new cost cuts or other changes beyond what the company had previously announced. The company announced that the salary of Ford CEO Alan Mulally would be cut to a dollar a year if Ford actually borrowed money from the government. When Mulally appeared before the House Financial Services Committee last month, he did not agree to the suggestion of such a pay cut. A spokesman for General Motors confirmed to CNN that CEO Rick Wagoner will also accept a $1 salary. Other details of GM's turnaround plan were not immediately available. Chrysler CEO Bob Nardelli agreed during congressional testimony last month he would also agree to a $1 salary in return for federal help. Now, of course, uh, when they talk about salary, let's face it, whether you know this or not, salary is not the primary way these guys are compensated. For example, Malali of Ford, he had a base salary of two million bucks. All right, so he'll only take a dollar. You know what? He'll take a dollar. But uh, also last year, he had total compensation of $21.7 million. This according to the company's filings. Uh, Wagoner of GM received base pay of $1.6 million, so he'll be happy to take a dollar in salary, he says. But his total compensation was actually $14.4 million. Chrysler, because they are privately owned, you can't buy stock at Chrysler at this point. <laughs> does not does not disclose executive pay. Says here that Ford and GM also announced plans to get rid of corporate jets. Malali, Wagoner, and Nardelli were all roundly criticized at a House hearing last month when they admitted that they had flown corporate jets to Washington to ask for help. Ford said it will sell its five corporate jets. GM said it plans to sell four of its seven jets and is exploring plans to transfer leases on the other three to another operator. Now, this is funny. I mean, ha-ha funny. I'm laughing my ass off here. Malali and Wagoner will be driving to Washington in hybrid vehicles made by their companies when they return to Capitol Hill later this week. To make their case for loans. Why don't they carpool? Really show some signs of change. Nardelli is also not planning to fly to Washington, but Chrysler has not disclosed any more specifics of his travel plans. He'll be hitchhiking. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, this is the big three still trying to get $25 billion, uh total in uh, bailout money. Now, um, I'm wondering if you think that the American automobile business can be fixed. Do you think it can be fixed? It's been going down the toilet now for years, and we all know that. With few exceptions. I mean, clearly, uh, our big three know how to make trucks, SUVs, and minivans. Anything big. They do a great job at that. But uh, the small stuff, we, uh, we've just never favored that at our American car companies. And when, uh, when the prices of uh, gasoline and all the petroleum products go up, that's when the car companies are in big trouble, like they are now. Do you think the American car business could be fixed? And if it were up to you, let's say you were sitting there in Washington and you were grilling these three of three executives of the big three automakers... What would you tell them that they need to do to fix things? Tom 
like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Like It like Show. It. It's the Tom Like It Show. Can you hear how short that break was? Are you kidding me? Three minutes of change. We've never had breaks that short. <laughs> it's one 800 tom Here they are grilling the big free automakers in Washington, D.C., making them dance on hot coals to get a total of $25 billion in bailout money. Uh, what would you do to fix the American auto industry? Let's say hello to Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Brother, first time, long time. How you doing? Doing okay. Hey, th- uh, quick and short. They need to make something attractive, which has not happened in a long time. And it has to have horsepower and be comparable in gas and quality. And it's just not there. Yeah. I- I'm sorry, Ford, it's made of plastic. It loses half its value off the lot. Why buy it? Well, is that true of every Ford car, though? I, I can't say, well, okay, the new Mustang is the first attempt at a good look car. But, I mean, come on, the Focus. Okay, the Fusion, they finally are getting over the Taurus. You know, I mean, so many years of just an Escort, a Taurus. I mean, notoriously bad cars. Didn't they, uh, the Taurus uh, was discontinued, then they brought it back, didn't they? Did they, did they stop making it again? Well, no, it's, you know, they, they, they had a car that came after, but, I mean, they're on the same platforms. You know, the the Focus is just a new name for the Escorts. They're just, they're doing more of the same. I mean, God, I remember I was at a wedding, and my girlfriend's car was on fire outside. It just randomly caught fire, ruined the wedding, because you could smell it in the chapel. Wow. So, you know, those are the memories I have of American cars. Thank you. Hondas, Acuras, Nissans, they run run for years. They'll run right into the ground. Jason, thank you for that. It's Andrew on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's going okay. Uh, That's my first time calling. Uh, Love the show. Thank you. And uh, I just want to tell you the best way for especially General Motors to save itself is to stop playing This Is Our Country by Don Mellencamp every five (laughs) seconds during the Super Bowl. Well, I did read that uh, GM is not going to have a Super Bowl ad this year for the first time in some time. Well, that's pretty good if they're trying to save money, isn't it? (laughs) Absolutely it is. (laughs) Yeah, it's actually funny. My friend works in research marketing and uh, with the auto industry, and they say that GM thinks it actually works, but people are actually searching for the American Revolution itself and not their car. (laughs) Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. Congress is grilling the big three automakers and uh, really just making them, uh, you know, dance to get them to uh, uh, do something to earn the $25 billion in, in bailout money they seek. What would you do to improve the American auto business? Armando on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Long-time listener, first-time caller, Tom. Thanks for uh, answering my call. Sure. I wanted to, I just wanted to ask the American community, what in the world are they thinking, just accepting their word? I mean, is there any specifics as to where they're going to allot these, these, these funds? I, I just don't understand how the, the U.S. government should bail out private companies, especially Daimler. They, they, they were actually switched over as, as a privately owned company, like you said earlier. They don't even disclose the, uh, the, the amount of money that their, uh, that their top executives are making. Yes, by the way, Daimler is now not, uh, 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 Chrysler is Chrysler LLC, and Daimler is a separate company that owns a small stake in Chrysler. Uh, but they are not the same company anymore. Is that right? That's right. You had mentioned earlier that they don't disclose the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the funds that they're making for these, these top executives. So I'm, I'm saying, wh- where is this going to be distributed and why are we, the, 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 the American public, have to bail these people out for, for the mistakes that they're making? Why not progress to a new, uh, car companies and make new opportunities for, for new companies and, and, and new, uh, new employers? Uh, why do we have to go res- resort to the old way uh, if it if it doesn't if it didn't work? I just don't understand that. Uh, wh- why aren't we Why aren't we seeking new 
uh, new ways uh, to evolve a, 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 to a new car or, or a, a better stylized car. I mean, obviously, the the American the American people aren't buying these these cars because they're not performing in the standards that. Uh, well, that they're gonna get. Have. Here's why they're gonna get bailed out. Uh, because the United Auto Workers are supporters of the Democratic Party, who will be running Congress and the White House, effective January 20. That is why it will happen. They will uh, do this little show for everybody to make it appear that they put the feet of the automakers to the fire. But then they're going to get the money anyway. It stupefies me, uh, Tom. And, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to make that point. Uh, also, with the other bailout that happened earlier this year, I just don't understand where that money's going and, and why we're, we're having to bail these people out. Uh, it, it's an old system that should be eradicated, you know, just like the uh, electoral vote. And uh, I, I just don't understand why, why we're not moving to progressive, uh, uh, progressive grounds as to eliminating these old... Uh, traditional ways, uh, these trite, uh, trite ways, if, if, I may, if I may. Armando, thank you. Here's Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mark. And I've been listening to you for about 110 years. Wow. It's, it's, it's a Almost since the brother. beginning. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Hey, uh, there are a lot of things that we can do to fix Detroit. And $25 billion is not the right way to go. I'm in favor of Darwinism. I say let these companies go bankrupt and then rise from the ashes just like any other business that suffers in, in rough times. I'm a businessman myself. I'm suffering hard times. I'm not looking for anybody to help me out. I'm just bucking up and carrying on. That's the way it ought to be. Um, well, I agree, and I happen to believe that if these companies go bankrupt, they can then terminate their deals with the union, and then they can, uh, you know, offer uh, people their jobs at uh, uh, more reasonable prices, and people can take them or leave them. I couldn't agree more, Tom. And in this economy, I think they're going to take them. Absolutely. Now, Robert Nardelli, the CEO for Chrysler, what a moron. That guy ran Home Depot straight into the toilet. He rode a golden parachute out of there, and now he's sitting pretty with another company, and he's asking for our money? Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, by the way, owned by a private company called Cerberus Capital Management. That's and correct. among the brain trust there is former Vice President Dan Quayle. Indeed. Uh, you pointed out, uh, correctly just a moment ago that Daimler is no longer uh, a sister company of Chrysler. However, there is some question as to whether Daimler was completely truthful when they sold their stake in Chrysler. There's some funny business there as well. Well, that's between the two entities, Daimler and Cerberus. Indeed. But Indeed. Uh, it's not our problem. But, uh, but the bottom line here is, look, all three companies are asking for money. And they're all privately owned. It's just that in one case, 100% of the stock is owned by a particular private equity firm. Well, look at it this way, Tom. I know that we need a, a strong American car company, maybe not companies, because they're intertwined with our defense. In a, a dire need of emergency, we have to produce vehicles to support our, our defense. Yeah, well, okay. you know what? Fine. You know what? Uh, here's what I say. Uh, instead of paying $25 billion that they're going to flush down the sinkhole, which will require them to go back and ask for another $25 billion in a few months, uh, why not uh, buy the companies and uh, have them owned by the Pentagon? And be That's done with exactly it. exactly where I was going, Tom. Yeah. Exactly. Let the Pentagon yeah. buy them, and then let the Pentagon uh, uh, do the necessary cost cutting. Hey, we're on the same page, brother. Thank you, Mark. Blow me up, buddy. Here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. What would you do to increase the possibility that the big three automakers would survive? What would you do to improve the American auto industry? That's what they're asking these guys. What are you going to do? What would you do? Mario on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, long time, first time. Thank you. Um, you know, even if they did bid out these companies, I don't think they could be saved. I think that why would someone go spend twenty four, twenty five thousand on a Chevy Malibu when they could buy a, you know, a Camry that'll last them probably a lifetime? 
Well, the fact is, that's what people seem to be doing. Yeah, and it's unfortunate for the, you know, the American uh, automakers. But I mean, but like the, the gentleman said earlier, you know, that their cars are just so so crappy. I mean, made out of plastic. They're, you know, they don't have a good uh, reputation. They don't last long. They're built out of, you know, just there's no horsepower in them. I don't know. I just don't get it. Well, look, I, think I mean, look. I mean, here's the bottom line. What better value is there in the world than a Toyota Corolla? There's none. <laughs> I mean, in terms of the quality, the fit and finish of the car, the interior, uh, the amount of miles you can get out of one of those cars, and the price. Yeah. You can't beat it. To me, to me that is the gold standard. That is what everybody should be aspiring to. As far as the hybrid is concerned, the Toyota Prius right now has set the standard. If somebody can build a better one, I'm 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 ready, willing, and able to look at it. Oh, same here. I'd be more than happy to look at a GM car if they could perform. I would. I wouldn't own a Hummer in my next five lifetimes. Oh no! <laughs> and, and I don't under, Yeah, it's crazy. And I don't understand how GM. You know, they knew they were gonna. This is gonna happen, and they still go into all this money building these Hummers and these. Uh, what are they called? Suburbans and these big. You know. Gas hogs, and you know, and you know, instead of focusing on these smaller uh, economical cars, I don't know. They, and what does GM have other than their Suburbans and Tahoes? What 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 decent car do they have? Well, GM makes great. Uh, the Cadillacs have uh, have been improved dramatically, and they are fantastic. I got to tell you something; they are fantastic. Uh, but yeah, but other than you know, Cadillac yeah, has an exception. But other than Cadillac, yeah, but again, you you get, what does GM do well? Trucks, Cadillac. Yeah, uh, okay, uh, the SUVs, uh, they did good minivans. I mean, th that's that's what they do. Uh, do they make a car like the Toyota Corolla? In no, my opinion, no. They don't. And that, that To me, that's the bottom line. Right now, people need smaller, cheaper cars. It's a recession, folks. 1-800-5800-TOM. What would you do to improve the big three automakers? Donna on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom Baller? How <laughs> you doing? Much, Donna. I'm doing okay. You know what? They need to get rid of these godless unions. Unions are dated. They are antiquated. And they're bargained for employees, which is what employees are called in the union. I work in human resources. They are not a bargain. Now, I understand for all intents and purposes why unions were initially created back in the day. This was way before the division of labor and standard and enforcement was strong. But you have these union employees and their stewards and their leaderships that have a sense of entitlement. They get these automatic, what they call step increases, which is really biannually or quarterly. They get these mandatory bonuses because in a labor agreement, that's really a loop of entitlements and what you can and cannot do for an employee. My increases, those are multipliers that are based on my personal performance, probably you as well, and they are equally based on my performance and the company's performance. If the company does not perform well, my bonus reflects as such, and that may include not getting one at all. Get rid of the unions. Thank you, Donna. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's what they're doing on Capitol Hill. They're uh, just roasting the big three automakers. It's like, what are you going to do to improve your company for the long term? Now, of course, they're going to give them that loan anyway. This is all a big show they're just putting on for the American people, and ultimately they're going to get the money, regardless of how good or bad their plan is. But I want to know what you would do to improve the American auto industry. Alan, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Yes, sir. What I would do, step one, no one earns a dollar if they've already run their company in the ground. They can earn zero. I would say if your job title starts with a C and ends in an O, you're fired day one, clear your desk out, get out of there. These guys didn't start up a company, right? How long have these big three been around? Decades. Maybe 100 years, I'm guessing? Okay, so it was pretty much on autopilot. You chimp in there, let things run, and they'll keep running. So how did these three boneheads, and not just three, I'm sure they're backed up by 100 yes-men, how did they all run their companies down and to the ground? Well, you got to be an idiot to do that. Well, you know, uh, it's not just the current guys. I mean, this has been a process that's uh, been uh, happening now, I think, since the 70s. You know, when, okay. uh, when, when uh, Michael Moore made the movie Roger and Me, it was already starting. My father was threatened by a GM union back in the late 60s when he worked there, when he was a younger person. 
he got out. He said that he said I'm not having any part in a company that physically threatens uh, people who are in the Brotherhood or whatever you call the uh, the, the group, the auto workers. The he union? was physically threatened. Yes, sir. He got out. He went and worked at Ponderosa Steakhouse instead. Oh my, Sean on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. How are you? Great. Well, I was hearing about your debate about these three big companies, and I don't think they should get the money, period. I think they should cut down on well, how many different 10 million cars uh, models they got out there. They need to cut that out first and then focus on... That's why Toyota, Honda, why do we say those? Because they have more of more, more common cars. Well, we got Ford Thunderbird, we got Ford Mustang, we got Ford what? You name it. We got GM what? We got, like, the Hummers and all these other big guys. Chrysler's got what? Uh, Mercury and all these other... So many, too many cars, too many models, too many makes. It's ridiculous. So you'd cut down the number of nameplates and the number of models? Uh, well, I can't think of all of them. I'm not a big uh, car fanatic, but I know that there's too many out there for Ford, GM, and uh, Chrysler. All right. Sean, thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM, the Tom Likas Show. Now heard in L.A. six days a week. Check out our Saturday show, 2 to 6, this Saturday. Come on, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. Did you check out that commercial break? Shortest break we've ever had. That's it. That's right. Shorter commercial breaks. We take the calls faster. We get more people on. That means even you, Buster, you can get on the air by calling us here at 1 800 5800 Tom. It's 1 800 5800 866. So they're doing a little. Christians to the Lions, a little show for us there on Capitol Hill. They're dragging in the big three automakers and making them dance. Tell us why you deserve $25 billion in loans that you're going to get anyway when it's all over. <laughs> Jeez. What would you do to improve the auto industry? Because that's what these guys are being asked. What are you going to do to improve your own industry? What would you do? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, a lot of calls. Danan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, well, I'm calling because um, for once I actually agreed with some of the stuff you're saying, so I decided to give you a call. Really? Um, <laughs> yes. Um, I believe that there's a lot of things that they can do instead of just handing them money. I think that it's really important as Americans that we learn to um, basically take responsibility for our own actions. And I believe that handing them more money is not really going to make them figure out how to solve their problems. It's going to make them realize, oh, hey, I can get money every time I have a problem. So I believe that one of the main things that they should be focusing on, like the other callers, is they should be getting rid of the top um, gas guzzlers, such as the Hummers, things like that. Instead of re remodeling and making them smaller, they should just do away with them. Realize that it was a bad idea and get rid of them. Well, the, you know? here's the thing, though. They were not a bad idea when people wanted to buy them. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. But it's not it's not the day for the big, ginormous cars with gas guzzling and, and especially with the way the economy is. They should be at least, you know, de depleting their, their fleet of those cars and focus on a better gas-efficient car. I mean, look at... You, you, know, you do understand, though. And again, yeah. I'm not defending the car companies. I'm the right, first right. one to tell you they've had years to adjust to this possibility, <laughs> and they've done nothing. But, you know, you can't just put out a small car. It takes a few years of design and development. You've got to build the uh, factory equipment to assemble those cars. So you can't just stop making SUVs on Friday and start making fuel-efficient, smaller vehicles on Monday. It doesn't work that way. Well, I agree with that, Tom, but you got to figure. Look at what they're doing for Europe. They have a car, uh, I believe it's Ford, put out a car that in Europe, it's, it's a small, I think it's a Focus, I'm not positive, but there is a car that they have just put out that they're marketing in Europe that has like 32 miles to a gallon. It's this small little car. So why the hell can't they put that out here? 
That's a good what question. Is- In fact, if you go to Europe, you'll see lots of small cars you don't see here. In Mexico, and they're all the same, the same makers. They're our makers. Why are we, why are we putting only those models here? You know, putting those models there and putting the big, you know, I understand. Americans are greedy. We want more. I understand that. But, you know, if they're going, if they're, if there's not that much there, I mean, if their biggest competition is a Toyota, I would think that they would start focusing on what their competition are putting out that is selling and create something that to be comparable to them instead of trying to be this big American muscle. You know what I'm saying? I, I know just, what you're saying, Danette. I thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's LT on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, I'm listening to you, and I'm just getting so angry at the callers that are calling in. I love the topic, but I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm a proud American. I drive three cars. I got a Jeep with an eight-cylinder. I got a Ford Ranger, and I got a big Dodge Durango with a 5.9-liter Hemi in it and Flowmaster exhaust. If you want to make the auto industry a little more profitable and a little more uh, a little more hot and a little more sexy with the cars, Americans have to put up or shut up and start buying American cars again. And demand them to put those cars out. And when your people are calling in and talking about the Camry and their and their their Corollas and all these crappy Nissans and their Sentras, and they say the American cars are made of plastic, the Camry's made out of plastic too. I mean, all these Japanese cars are made out of plastic. If American people would start buying American cars, maybe these big three would go back to making hot cars. You got the Mustang, you got the Charger, you got the Challenger, you got the Viper, you got the Corvette, you got the Thunderbird. There's a lot of hot cars out there. You know, they just don't want to buy them. They'd rather roll into uh, Toyota in, in Burbank and pick up a car for $22,000 on finance, and that's what you're going to get. And let me tell you something. Now, wait a minute. Are you telling me, wait, you telling me that Toyota cars don't last, like, forever? I could tell you, yes, I, I'll tell you this, that uh, the American cars used to have the reputation that at 100,000, the engines would die. Now you got bumper to bumper, 150, 200,000 on an American car. I, I guarantee you they ride. And they have they have a comprehensive package behind it. Now, will, will a Corolla last longer? Will an Altima last longer, 220,000 miles? Yes, but I'm a student of like it's 101, Tom. I listen to you practically six days a week, and I'll tell you this, when I roll in to pick up a chip, I'm glad to pick her up in my Durango and my tinted windows and my, my Flowmaster exhaust. I'm not getting any ass if I pull up in a Corolla. <laughs> I, uh, I agree you won't get any ass if you show up in a Corolla. But you might get ass if you showed up in a Supra or you showed up in a 350Z from Nissan. I think you'd get some ass for sure. And even Mitsubishi, which doesn't sell that well in this country, just about any Mitsubishi car is hotter than, than most American cars in terms of being, like, sexy. And, again, I'll make the exceptions. Uh, the Corvette, of course. The Mustang, yes. And that Thunderbird Ford put out a few years ago that they stopped making was really hot. There have been some hot cars. Just not enough of them. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Kyle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, good afternoon, Tom. Pleasure to talk to you. I know. Hey, um, I just think, um, you know, we're a little bit behind the eight ball of the American car companies. But um, honest to God, I work for one of the big threes. And um, every day, 12 hours a day, every email, every conference call, I put my heart and soul into our car company. And if you're only behind the scene and see the pride that from the engineers to the guy who's picking the parts, how much we want to turn companies around. And as a Tom Lika student, I think, uh, you know, pride and Hard work will get you far in life. And we really do have some great products out there. Uh, Car and Driver just picked two of our cars for um, for uh, best in class. Uh, Ford has gotten eight crash tests, top ten. Uh, I think it's just about time where the American people wake up and realize the quality that's coming out of Detroit. Uh, the question uh, is also, though, the value of the cars. Because uh, if the American people are paying what we read, which is on larger vehicles, 1500 per car, and uh, smaller vehicles, 1000 per car in legacy costs, are we getting our money's worth? Yeah, well, that's a lot of that's perception. Of course, it's easier to bury that legacy cost in a $36,000 SUV. But you also got to look at, look at the Chevy Oveo. It sells for twelve five. dollars uh, Look at the Chevy Malibu. It's about $2,500 lower than the Camry. Uh, of course, it has a three-year, you know, five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. 
Uh, the Camry can't do that. Nissan can't do that. I think people need to start looking at our fit and finish, and um, hopefully we'll wake up, we'll do the marketing, and then we'll go from there. All right, Kyle, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. What would you do to improve the American car industry, if anything? This is Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How you doing, man? Doing okay. All right. I'm, I'm kind of pissed off, bro, because <clears throat> GM made an electric car that they got rid of, and they never sold it to the American people. All they did was lease it to them. And when the lease was up, they got rid of all of them, smashed them, and put them in the desert. You know, and uh, I think that should be a requirement if they get this loan <clears throat> to guarantee that they were going to make they would make uh, at least you know thirty percent of their cars electric. You know, there's no excuse for this. Do you think people would buy those cars? Most people's commute are less than a hundred miles a day. You know, and those cars went a hundred miles or more on a charge. So, yeah, that'd be the perfect thing. You know, you'd be saving money on gas. You go plug it into your house and you get home. Costs you, you know, two bucks a day to go to work. All right. Thank you for that. Appreciate right, the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Great show, man. Thank you, Dave. Look, uh, I don't have a solution for restructuring the big three, but I do have a solution for fixing their economic crisis. Uh, I say instead of giving money to the big three directly, give every qualified taxpayer in America with a job a $10,000 voucher to put down as a down payment on an automobile from one of the big three. And the, one of the catches is it has to be a vehicle that gets at least 20 miles per gallon. That way you're killing two birds with one stone. You're tackling fuel consumption. And uh, you might help out the crisis that lending institutions are in because people would have to qualify to borrow the rest of the money, some people. By the way, the lending institutions in the form of banks and what have you, uh, they've been given $250 billion so far, I believe it is. No strings attached. No strings exactly. attached. No requirement to tell what they did with that money or where it went. And many of these institutions are sitting on that money. Exactly. Hey, I'm driving around in my Nissan. If I got a $10,000 voucher from the government, I'd be tempted to go in and buy me a new Dodge or a Chevrolet. Really? Just because you feel bad for the companies or because you think those are superior cars, superior values? Um, A, a little of both. I think it's a little bit of uh, patriotic pride in, in an American product, even though we all know that the majority of the parts now are manufactured out by foreign automakers anyway, but... You know, it's it's a little bit of pride, and it's it's a little bit of uh, you, you know, I, I believe that that the big three are competitive when it comes to quality now. Also, keep in mind that uh, there are many uh, uh, foreign cars that are manufactured in places like Tennessee. Exactly. I mean, it, it's a catch twenty two. I mean, you you look at I think here in Mississippi, where I'm at, one of the biggest Nissan plants in the world now is in Mississippi. So, if you you kiss that goodbye, who knows how many jobs are. You know, a state like Mississippi can't take that. I understand, Dave. I thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like is 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 tom On Capitol Hill, the big three automakers are making a second appearance this week. Trying to get the government to lend them $25 billion to fix it. And they're going to get the money no matter what they say. But, of course, they're being made to go on TV and appear to be grilled. What are you going to do to improve your business? For the long term, they're being asked. Well, I'm asking you, what would you do to fix the American automobile business for the long term? It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, hey Tom. How are you doing? Okay. Uh, Tom, I want to make a few comments. Um, it's not the cars that are the problem. Uh, the two things that are affecting the sales are the gas prices and the financing and the interest rates uh, through, uh, that people uh, acquire these cars through. 
And if the government has bailed out the banks, they should have a say in how they, uh, how they should uh, conduct their business with these car companies. And with the gas companies, with the ExxonMobil, was it last quarter alone, they made an excess of $15 billion in profit. So what, what I'm suggesting... What's wrong with that? Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. The only problem is that they artificially uh, increased uh, the gas prices and the barrel prices to make more of a profit. How, well, how, well, if that's true, why did they stop doing it? Because uh, it was, uh, it would turn into uh, the co complete crisis. It would be even more devastating than it already is. So they only wanted so much of a crisis, and then they rolled the prices back to fifty percent of what they'd been. This was a conspiracy. Uh, basically, basically. Well, I, again, it makes no sense. Why roll the prices up to four, four and a half dollars a gallon, and then roll them down below two dollars a gallon? Well, to make that excess profit. But why? Why would they want to stop earning excess profit? Because they would not be able to continue uh, the doing business that way. Why not? It's just you just wouldn't be able to do that. You can't go in in, a, in such a short amount of time double gas prices and completely uh, mess the economy up uh, as much as that they already did. Well, uh, why didn't they do this years ago? Why wasn't it ever four dollars again? Well, it, it, there is a trend. It always uh, th this always happens. It happens. What always times. happens? It, we never had four dollar a gallon gas till this year. What always happens? Uh, not that it went up to $4 uh, in gas. It's just the gas prices have skyrocketed. Yeah, but why, why were they never $4 a gallon before? Why did they pick this year to, 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 to make all this excess profit, as you call it? That I don't know. That not, part you I haven't figured out yet. Yeah, the main reason, uh, David, and, uh, you know, again, I'm sure you don't read any business publications or know anything about business. Uh, the main reason oil prices and therefore gasoline prices went up is because the value of the dollar went down. And when the value of the dollar started going back up against the uh, British pound and the euro, euro and the Japanese, isn't it amazing yeah, and how and the price that. of a, a gallon of gas went down? It, you know, it, this has very little to do with greed or excess profits. It has a lot more to do with the fact that the government allowed the, 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 the currency to be devalued to help companies sell our goods in other countries. And when the dollar is devalued, it takes more dollars to buy a barrel of oil. It's just simple economics. Yeah, that, that, that much, that much I There's know. There's no conspiracy here. The value of the dollar was also dropped down, so they wouldn't have to pay as much of the dollar back to other foreign countries, such as China, to finance the war. Well, whatever the reason, the point is the dollar was devalued. When you devalue the dollar, the, the barrel of oil, in whatever currency they use, of Saudi Arabia or wherever... It's Europe. That, that, if that currency stays steady and the dollar goes down, it's going to take more dollars to buy what, one unit of their currency. Okay. If it and therefore, more, it's going to cost more to buy a barrel of oil. That's one and that means the price of a gallon of gasoline is going to go up. I do agree with you. Now, fundamentally, that's, that's the reason. But if that... If it, it is not some conspiracy dollars, because I'll tell you what. I own, uh, through mutual funds, I own stock in these companies. I want them to make the most profit possible. Wonderful. So if it takes... Uh, I, I'm, I want to understand what you're saying. There's if no such thing as dollars, excess profit. What do you mean there's no such thing as that? There's no such profit? thing as a, who, this is a free market economy. Who are you to decide what is enough profit? Well, it, uh, petroleum and oil and stuff like that is also government regulated to a certain extent. It's not completely free enterprise. Well, in what way? Those are natural, those are natural resources that the government has a say in. Because no, they, but they don't because the these economy. resources are being bought from other countries. I mean, as far as drilling in the United States, the government regulates that. But if you buy a barrel of oil from Saudi Arabia, the government uh, can't touch it. Well, then, the, if, they, if, it, if they're seeing that the, the oil prices are, are, are increasing so much where the gas prices are going up and it's hurting the economy and it's affecting markets such as the automobile market. How about you use less gas? How about you use less gasoline? How about you do it that way? Do you know, by the way, the other reason why the price of gasoline has gone down so much? It's because people are using so much less now. I, I wouldn't say. Demand is I down. Would. No, this is a fact. This is a fact. Demand is down. They said it on CNBC again today that demand is down. When demand goes down, the price goes down. 
Yeah, but CNBC isn't really a scholarly source uh, to depend on. Really, the, I, which the media I, tell me which scholarly want. source you're using. I'd, I'd like to know so I can look it up. Economic analysis uh, through the International Monetary Fund. You have that in front of you? Not in front of me, but it's uh, it's it's on the website. Those those are those are open to the public. Anybody Wait. can access those. And these are and these are put out by whom? I by the government. It's 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 a it's a government agency. Wait, where did the government? The government never said any such thing. You're making this up. You're pulling it out of your ass. But I thank you for the call. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Let's say hello here to Eric. What would you do to improve the car industry in the United States, Eric? Hi, uh, Tom. Yeah, the way to really do it is to start at the bottom, uh, which is to change the work ethic of the uh, the car manufacturers, I mean, of the workers. Unlike all the other workers since 1940, the car manufacturing work ethic has not changed. The rest of the country has become more efficient, fewer people doing the same jobs or more jobs, and the, the current... Employees within the UAW are still performing the same jobs they did 40 years ago. Unfortunately, we've become a mechanized society where one person can do the job of five people. So maybe we need to just, you know, fire four out of five people, and then the companies, I'm sure, are going to be very profitable because they only need about a fifth of the workforce they currently have. They don't even need to be very profitable. They just need to uh, not lose money. Well, yeah, but the, the purpose of a corporation, as you like to state so often, is to make as much profit as you can. Right. I, uh, me, I'm not necessarily convinced that in our economy, manufacturing stuff is all that profitable anymore. We used to make all the TVs. We don't make any anymore. We used to make, uh, you know, all the refrigerators, and now you see companies like LG making refrigerators. I mean, we're just not a manufacturing economy anymore. It's uh, sad but true. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. If you live here in L.A., the Tom Lankas Show is now six days a week. Hear us on 97.1 FM Talk Saturdays from 2 until 6. Tune in this Saturday. You'll hear me for God's sake. The Tom Lankas Show.